Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. I would like to demonstrate the different types of cheek retractors used in intraoral photography. The first type I'd like to show is the metal cheek retractor. One of the problems with the metal cheek retractor is that it reflects light. And this can detract from the photograph that you're taking. Uh, a way of solving this problem is to sandblast the cheek retractor. And by sandblasting it, it makes it dull and it doesn't reflect light. I'm going to place both of these in the patient's mouth and show you the difference. Okay, would you hold this please? Okay, you hold this? I'm going to close your teeth together. Now you can see uh, the problems involved here. Uh, when you have a ring light or a point source, the, the light can reflect off of this and uh, give you some real problems with lens flare or just brightnesses in the photograph that detract from your intraoral photograph. The sandblasting that you see on the uh, cheek retractor on this side, this uh, frosting does wear away and after it's been sterilized for six months to a year, uh, the shininess begins to reappear and then all we need to do is re-blast this. Now I'd like to show another type of cheek retractor and this is the single-ended plastic. And the single-ended plastic is the same as the metal except it is transparent shows a tissue through and this also sometimes can reflect light but it is uh, much less. Some people do sandblast these also. Probably the most useful cheek retractor is the double-ended and the double-ended cheek retractor has uh, two ends. One is the smaller end that's useful for children and for adults with smaller mouths. The other end is useful for adults. Now when you're using a cheek retractor, it's best to rotate the cheek retractor and use the moisture in the mouth to lubricate this as you turn it. And I'm going to place it in and turn it, as you see here. Now would you please hold this? And then we'll put the one in on the other side. Could you hold that, please? I'm not going to have you close. Now, with the teeth closed then, we get a full view of the teeth and the soft tissue. And when you'd like a lateral view, you put more tension on one side and less tension on the other side, and you can get a right lateral view of the posterior teeth in occlusion. And the same thing on the other side. Now, there are five basic shots that we take in a standard intraoral series. The first one would be a straight on shot of the teeth in occlusion. You close please. The next shot would be a maxillary occlusal and that is taken using a mirror. Would you open please? Now we have these front surface mirrors that are used to reflect the maxillary teeth. And these also come in two sizes. Place this in the patient's mouth. You tip back just a bit. Okay. Now this is used then to take a photograph of the occlusal surfaces of the maxillary teeth. Now if you find that this mirror is a little bit narrow, as this one is, there's one that is slightly larger, and I'll show you how that works. This has a tendency sometimes to uh, gag some patients. Here, let's see how that is. Okay. Well, that's a little bit wider. Now, the third photograph that is taken is the mandibular occlusals, and that is taken <clears throat> with the same mirror turned so. Open, please. 
down a little bit. Tip down a little bit. Okay. Now, with this mirror in this position, we uh, will photograph then the uh, occlusal surfaces of the mandibular teeth. And uh, you may find that there will be a little condensation. And if there is, then you will have an assistant dry the mirror off, and uh, then you can photograph the occlusal surfaces of the mandibular teeth. The next view is the right lateral view. And close your teeth, please, and turn your head to the side. And then we'll put some tension on, keep your teeth together, please, and tension on this side if you can. We'll just pull that right out, like so, and get the light in it. And the other view, turn your head toward me, is the left lateral view. Now there are, if you have difficulty showing that in a photograph, there's also a way of, of uh, showing the left and right lateral by using a mirror. And instead of using a cheek retractor on this side, can you close please? Okay, now we'll take this out. And we'll open please now slightly. Open a little wider. I'll place this in here. Now I'll close your teeth together. And turn your head toward me. And by using the mirror and photographing off of the, is that, that pinching you there? Okay. Mm. And photographing off of the mirror, you can then photograph the occlusal surfaces or uh, the buckle surfaces or the way the teeth occlude on this uh, right lateral surface. And the same thing can be uh, done on the other side. There are also some other mirrors that are available uh, for intraoral photography. <clears throat> this is a large mouth mirror, a number 10 size. And you will find uh, sometimes it's not necessary to take the entire occlusal. Let's place this back in again. And if you would like to show some detail, for example, on the lingual of the uh, maxillary incisors. Open, please. A little bit wider. Uh, a mirror, such as this number 10 mirror, can uh, be used to show detail in smaller areas. Now here we can see the lingual surfaces of the uh, maxillary incisors. That same mirror then, can you open just a bit, can be used to show the uh, linguals of the mandibular incisors. Also a smaller mouth mirror a number five front surface mirror can be used to show small details on an individual tooth. And if you'd like a close-up of uh, a, a restoration, a mouth mirror, as you see here, is sufficient for showing a close-up of a, of a small area. I should mention that all the mirrors that we use are always front surface mirrors. That is, the silver is on the front surface because if it's a standard mirror where the silver is under the glass, you'll get a double reflection. This is a metal mirror that can be used for two purposes. It has uh, an end that can be used for maxillary and mandibular occlusals, and this end can be used to photograph the lingual surfaces of molars. I'd like to demonstrate how that is done. Open, please. By placing this in the posterior part of the mouth, you can get an excellent view of the gingival surfaces and the uh, uh, lingual surfaces of the uh, maxillary teeth. Also can be turned and it can be used uh, for the anterior or for the lingual surfaces on the other side of the, of the mouth, even back to the third molar. There are some special problems to consider when we're using front surface mirrors for photographing the uh, oral cavity. And that is, number one, the mirror does absorb some light when we're photographing. And so that we need to increase the exposure. Usually it's uh, half a stop. With some mirrors, it is one stop. And this needs to be determined uh, when you experiment with the mirrors that you purchase. The other problem is with some front surface mirrors, the Silver, or in this case the metal, is the surface that does the reflecting. And if it is scratched in sterilization, it will influence the reflective qualities of the mirror. So therefore, with any kind of a front surface mirror, it's best to wash it 
and then place it in a bag and autoclave it separately. And do not use sterilization where you're sterilizing it with a, a lot of other sharp hand instruments because this can destroy the reflective qualities of the mirror. Now I'd like to show the use of a, <coughs> another specialty type of mirror. And this is associated with <coughs> a Deason lens. The Deason lens is available for two times magnification. And it comes equipped with a mirror assembly in the front of the housing. And this then can be uh, placed in the mouth. And uh, let's see if that shows. And for photographing an individual tooth, this is most useful. This lens also has a built-in ring light. It has its own light source. Also, when we're taking a direct head-on shot, a frame is used to take the uh, photograph. And I'll demonstrate how we do that. This frame is placed in the front of the lens. And then whatever is included in the frame itself, it close just a bit, will be in the photograph. And so that is the area of focus, or the zone of focus. And so the photograph can be taken then of that area. This is one of the standard setups for a single lens reflex camera. Uh, it does have both of the light sources that we commonly use in intraoral photography. A ring light, which tends to give an even illumination, but tends to have flat lighting, and a point source. The point source has a light off to one side that does give a little bit of shadowing or modeling to the teeth. Now, in using the point source, there is a problem when you are taking a lateral shot. One of the standard photographs that I was talking about earlier, uh, can you re relax this just a little bit and keep your teeth together. Now, when photographing the right lateral, as here, and you have the point so source over to one side, as you can see here, uh, you get uh, a shadow from the cheek retractor and the cheek. So it is necessary to flip this over to the other side to make sure that the light source is on the surface of the teeth so it's going to project the light uh, along these posterior teeth. And then when we get to the other side, now over here, then the point source is off to the wrong side. So you have to remember if you're using this type of illumination to flip the flash over to the other side so that again you get illumination on and back into uh, the posterior teeth. We would like to demonstrate the use of Polaroid land photographs in intraoral photography. We use color Polaroids for our dental school records. The Polaroid land camera is a special camera designed for intraoral photography. In this instance, we have an anterior guide. I'll place that into the the Polaroid camera, and a ring light that's in the front of the Polaroid camera. Now we'll be taking a series of three photographs. This is what is used currently in the dental school for photographic records. An anterior straight on shot with the teeth closed, and a maxillary occlusal, and a mandibular occlusal. Okay. Now the anterior guide is placed on the patient's chin. And then the, the Polaroid film then is timed. Next in the sequence then is to remove the anterior guide and then a mirror is, is uh, placed on. Now the mirror then will uh, be used to photograph the maxillary occlusals. Okay. That's placed in its proper position. And the film is removed and timed. And then the, the camera is simply turned around 
and a mandibular occlusal is made. Okay. okay. It takes 60 seconds for the, I can relax your mouth now, for the Polaroid film to develop. After the 60 second development time, we have a photograph that can be then mounted in the patient's record as a, a permanent indicator of what the patient was like when we did photograph the, uh, the patient. This is useful for legal purposes and purposes for identification. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.